Hi guys, welcome. Skalink here, and we are off for the bonus episode of the entirety of the Reignited Trilogy. Just covering the Reignited Trilogy as a whole, which can include the original trilogy for the majority of this. So we're not going to be having any original footage, but basically for the majority of this episode, we're going to be talking about cheat codes that were either carried over or have changed to be adapted into all three games of the Reignited Trilogy. Also, just want to make mention, that is the official percentage, 112, not 337. That's what it was considered a fan-made overall total for those who like to speedrun Spyro 1, 2 and 3 on the original PlayStation all in a row, which is why they consider like, oh, I beat the whole trilogy, 337%, that's what it's called. My time may not be exact as what it was added up in the uh, collections of last video, but obviously I've been doing other stuff as well with this in preparation for this video because, uh, yeah, we're going to be getting into that. So let's load up our file, uh, you can actually see where we've been uh, finished up on on each one thus far uh, and you can actually access the art gallery if you've unlocked any of them from any of the game right here I mean we haven't actually been talking about mostly these menus since uh, part one of every of the game of the project but since now we've completed it all there is stuff that we want to be talking about first of all we're going to be going over all pretty much all the trophies there are a total of a hundred and Eight trophies, I believe. That is a lot of trophies. 37, 30, so that's uh, 67, 41. Uh, yeah, that's for 108 trophies. I'm pretty sure that my math is correct there. And so, yeah, we got 300% on trophies effectively because each one is 100%. Well, I guess that would be 100% on trophies for all three games, but whatever at this point. Do we really have to be specific on that? Basically, the trophies are exclusive to the Reignite version only. There is nothing like related to them in the original trilogy, although the first game does have skill points that are exclusive to the Reunited trilogy, well, 2 and 3 had the original Insomniac uh, skill points with no additional added, so just thought I mentioned that. So, as you can see, I've got Platinum for all three, as we've already covered them all, pretty much if you want to see us grab all these, they were throughout the entirety of the Let's Play of all three games, but for the majority of the Spyro 3 ones, uh, well, that minority, shall I say, we did have to get quite a few in the bonus episode of that, so check the bonus episode for of each uh, game in particular for the specific trophies that we couldn't get at the time although we had to get skill points in Spyro 2 after we got the super flame because it's just a lot easier that way Spyro 3 however we pretty much got all of them before we even finished the game so that's actually kind of a uh, neat bonus so that's pretty cool I'm bashing stuff uh, <laughs> but yeah there's not really much else to talk about in there so how about we uh get into the game. So we're going to be hopping into Spyro 1 first of all, and the first thing that we're going to talk about is actually a PS4 DualShock 4 exclusive. And I do mean that. For the Reunited Trilogy there is actually an exclusive thing that is on the DualShock 4. Let me get into a tough level so I can take damage pretty easily. Okay, so as you can see here, we're in uh, Toasty right now, and I actually have webcam on screen, so you can see my control, I'm actually post commentating over this, you can see that I've got my controller just showing, nothing else below me, you can see the light on the uh, controller is yellow when Sparks is at, at full health, or when he's yellow, basically the controller's colour that you can just look down at a glance either with the top or you know look at the top of the controller or just the front of the controller when you take a hit you go down to blue you take another hit you go down to green it shows up as it is on the controller but once sparks is gone it's on red so yeah because that, that's pretty cool because like that's something that i just that most people just don't notice because you're looking at the screen at all times you're not looking at your controller but it's only a dual shock 4 thing and i wanted to bring attention to that because that's a very really nice touch that you don't really need to see. I'm not counting the death that I just had here. Uh, that was a thing that we've already done. Well, I might do, I don't know. But it's not going to go to any specific game. Probably Spyro 1, I don't know. Yeah. But you get what I mean. That's basically just to show you that uh, we have... Yeah, we just we have that exclusive Spyro for PS4 thing. And if you have may have noticed in that footage, I would have had uh, 99 lives. I was actually using my brother's file for that, but we can do it ourselves. We're at 39 lives with a single gem. I forgot that we only had one single uh, life orb. But yeah, we want to get that 99 lives. But here's the thing. When we're going to be covering cheats for this entire video, they apply to the entirety of the Reignited Trilogy, so you can so the codes are the same throughout the entirety of the Reignited Trilogy for PS4 or Xbox One. They work throughout all three games. The codes that we are also covering, however, work for the majority of the original trilogy. What I mean by the majority of the trilogy is basically that they work on 
two of the three games instead of one. So, yeah, that's a little bit confusing because, like, for example, the code that we're going to be talking about right now, the 99 Lives code, for P I'm going to have it put on screen, of course. For Spyro 1, for whatever reason, when you want to input cheats, because we didn't actually talk about many Spyro 1 cheats uh, in the bonus episode, but that's mainly because that it's like, oh, you can go to every hub world by unlocking just from the balloonist, like, early, but if you just complete the area, you, like, 100%, you can just go to the next area anyway, most of the time. So there's not really much point to that, unless you want to do nasty levels early, but then you still have to do all them in order, so I don't see the point. Anyway, um, yeah, like, the, the, to, to type in codes in the original Spyro 1 for PS1, you got to press select first. So that's not in this menu, that's the guidebook menu, or your totals menu, there is no guidebook in Spyro 1. Obviously, in the remake, it is called the guidebook in general, but you get semantics. <laughs> I'm on a motor mouth right now. Because there's a lot to talk about. So yeah, in Spyro 1 for PS1, the 99 lives code, you have to be in the guidebook. So you have to press select first, not start, to pause. Then you got to press square, 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 circle up, circle left, circle right, circle. And then once you exit the menu, you'll get uh, 99 lives. The sound cue isn't actually the obvious in, the, in Spyro 1. In Spyro 2, it doesn't exist. I, me and my brother have looked else, everywhere. We've even seen, like, forms through 2002 asking, why is there no, like, 99 live code for number two? There just isn't. I've tried abbreviating it. I've tried mirroring it. I've tried doing le lefts instead of rights, and it don't work. It, there's just no 99 live code for Spyro 2 on PS1. However, they brought it back for Spyro 3. Why would you remove the code and then put it back? And it's different as well. For Spyro 3, it's... Well, for Spyro 3 and the Reignited Trilogy on PS4, it is R2... Well, I'll just do it right now, actually. Um, R2, L2, R2, L2, up, 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 circle. I wasn't in the pause menu. I have to be pausing in the Reignited version of Spyro 1, not in the guidebook, because it's paused for literally every other game other than Spyro 1 on PS1. So I have to be on the pause menu. It is... R2, L2, R2, L2, up, 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 circle. And then, bang, my lives are now 99. That will be instantaneous, but it does not carry over throughout the entirety of the uh, the Reunited Trilogy. The code is the same, but your lives don't carry over. They're separate for each game. So if I want 99 lives on Spyro 2 or 3 Reunited, I'm going to have to type in the code again, which I probably will do, because I like to have that 99 lives thing. But, yeah, I just, wanted to, I just needed to talk about that, because it just doesn't make sense. For Xbox One, it just swapped the the R the the R twos for right well the twos for triggers, the ones for bumpers, and the circles the B button. So it's pretty much the same button layout, but they're different. So it's right trigger, left trigger, right trigger, left trigger, up 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 B. So <laughs> I mean it's all on screen. I don't know why I'm reading them all out, but the, the 99 lives code is such an enigma because it's just not in Spyro 2. It's like the only game it's not in. The original PS1 Spyro 2, the 99 lives code isn't in. But it's in for the entire trilogy, and Spyro 3, and Spyro 1, and the code is the same from the original Spyro 3. It, I just don't, it doesn't make sense to me. It honestly doesn't. But, there is a Reignited exclusive code that I was going to cover later with the other quote-unquote transformation codes. But, I wanted to do it in Spyro 1, because it doesn't exist in the original Spyro 1. But, if you remember that in both the original Spyro 1 and Reignited Spyro 1... When you're in, um, this, uh, in Stone Hill, like, in the credits or whatnot, Spyro's got cool-looking shades. Would you bugger off, please? I'm talking. <laughs> and if you want to wear those shades, it's only a Reignited exclusive code. But, it, again, it works for all three games in the Reignited trilogy. So, if you want it, press pause. Press R1, 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 R1. Left, 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 left. Down, up, triangle. For... Uh, Xbox One uses its right bumper, right bumper, right bumper, right bumper, left, 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 down, up, Y. And we're wearing shades! Look at that! Now we're a cool purple boy! It's amazing. And yes, they do have reflective lenses, if you look carefully. That is amazing. It, the, the, the attention to detail, as I've said many a time throughout the entirety of the trilogy, it, like, graphics-wise, is just insane. It is almighty. And, you know, I can't get enough of it. And I wanted to show this off I mean, like, if I go into another game right now, Sp Spyro will still be wearing these shades because, like I said, it carries over for the entirety of the Reignited Trilogy, but it does not exist on any of the original PS1 releases. 
And now we're back in Dragon Shores, we're in Sparrow 2, and as I said before, carries over. I, mean, I wasn't lying. But yeah, we're in Sparrow 2 now, because like I said, that was pretty much all of the codes that we are covering so far that work in Spyro 1. All the other codes that we're covering up to this point work in Spyro 2, Spyro 3, and the Reunited Trilogy. Yeah, I don't know why. Spyro 1 just doesn't have a lot of cheat codes, but Spyro 2 lacks the 99 lives cheat. I don't get it, but up to this point, other than a few changes to the button combinations, the codes have the exact same effect, and they're all only unlockable throughout the trilogy, as well as PS1, Spyro 2 and 3, via cheat codes. You can't get them anywhere else. So, anyway, enough of my babbling, because I just tend to keep doing that. We've got another code. So we want to pause. I mean, most of this video is just going to be codes. Um, yeah, big head mode this time. So we've got, um, well, for Spyro 2 on PS1, it's up, 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 R1, 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 circle. For Spyro 3 on PS1, it's up, R1, up, R1, up, R1, up, R1, circle, 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 circle. It's like three circles longer. I don't know why. And they mixed it. They mixed the ups and the R1s. It's the, pretty much the same code, but a little bit longer and mixed a bit. I don't know why. And for the, for the Reignited Trilogy, it's pretty much the same as Spyro 2 on PS1. So it's up, 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 up. R1, 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 R1. Circle. And we got a big head. <laughs> this looks silly. It's like we're a big old bubble head. I mean, I guess this is where they got the idea for the pop figure. Or the Funko Pop, whatever it was called. I don't collect those things, so even though I do have like a, uh, uh, a what was it called? A metal fig of uh, Jason, David Frank, uh, Tommy Oliver, yeah, Green Power Ranger. So, <laughs> But yeah, you can get those kind of things, and he's basically got like a big old head. I mean, I haven't mentioned this. If you want to take off the, the glasses or undo these effects, you literally just got to do the cheat again. And then you undo it. So yeah, just, if you don't if you don't want to have any of the effects, just do the code again, and you will undo the effect. Unless it's you know the one ups. If you do the code again, you'll just replenish your one ups. Any transformation code that just alters your appearance, it doesn't really do anything to your hitbox or anything like that. Then yeah, but you just type in the code again, it'll undo it. So next code <laughs> is another code that is available on Spyro 2, Spyro 3, on PS1, as well as the entire Reunited Trilogy. You can type it on any game; it will carry it over on the Reunited Trilogy. Is the Paper Spyro code, also known as Flat Spyro or 2D Spyro. Yeah, it will make you 2D. It just flattens you on both sides. It's kind of funny. So, yeah, it's actually kind of weird here, actually, because um, on Spyro 2 for PS1, it's the same for Spyro 3 Reignited, well, for Spyro Reunited as well, uh, the Reunited trilogy. It's left, right, left, right. So I'll just do it now. Left, right, left, right. L2, R2, L2, R2 square. And, yeah, that looks very weird. I mean, you can't really tell if, you're, if you've if got it like this. I mean, maybe they were using this in the trailer. Because, <laughs> you know, they had him walking on the side like that. You probably would not notice. But, yeah, I mean, you're not entirely flat. But you're flat enough. <laughs> and, like I said, look, it does not affect your hitbox. I am still scuffling the wall from quite a far distance because I've been squished. But, yeah, it, for Spyro 2 on PS1, as well as the Reignited Trilogy, I mean, obviously... On Xbox One, that'll be left, right, left, right, left trigger, right trigger, left trigger, right trigger, X. But for Spyro 3 on PS1, they decided to change the 1s to 2s. Okay, so now I've got a lot of typing up to do, so I'm going to just bring up a table right now before I pause, because I was going to be too messy. Uh, we've got the colour codes. We can actually change Spyro's colour. Let me actually get out of paper for a second. Okay, so I'm out of paper now. But yeah, the colour codes are going to appear on screen right now because it's kind of messy. For Spyro 2 and 3 on the PlayStation 1, it's up, right, down, left, up, square, R1, R2, L, L1, L2, up, left, down, right, up, and that's not it. You now have one final button input, and if you press left, you become purple. If you press square, you become pink. If you press uh, circle, you uh, become yellow. If you press triangle, you become green. If you press blue, uh, if X, you get blue. <laughs> blue, yeah, X. Well, I guess that makes sense, because it's color-coded. Uh, actually, that makes a lot of sense. Shit. Yeah, it's according to the colors of the DualShock. I just realized that. Holy crap. And to get black, you press down. <laughs> 
but yeah, I mean, purple left, I don't know what that is, up is yellow, but it's, I don't understand those. But yeah, for the most part, most of those codes are actually multicolored to the PlayStation controllers. For the Xbox controllers, however, I'm not entirely too sure if that's correct. I mean, I have an Xbox 360, but I don't have the control on me right now, but yeah. Um, it's pretty It's pretty much uh, quite similar, so they're all on screen, as I mentioned. But here's the thing for the Reignited Trilogy. For whatever reason, the code is the same, except for the fact that every left is right, every right is left, and every... Um, no, the uh, the bumpers are not changed. It's literally just the left and right on the control pad, and that includes pressing in, instead of pressing left to be purple, you press right for purple. I don't know why the lefts and rights are swapped, because you know when you're in the menu you can't move. But I'm gonna, I'm just gonna have to flick through every single one to show you how it looks, and it pretty much is the same in Spyro 2 and 3 on PS1. So. Cutting montage. I don't think I need to show it, but I will be pressing the buttons again in order to get our purple boy back. But here are the colours. This is our pink boy. There we are. Now we got red, yellow, green, blue, black. And now we're a complete purple. As I said, if you want to undo the colour, you got to do the same code twice to return to normal. So we will do that. So let's type in that code one more time. And there we are. We are finally back to normal. That is going to take... That's a lot of dead footage right there. Because I the code is so long, I kept pressing it wrong. And every time I wanted to go for a certain direction, I pressed it wrong. Or I forgot the one square in the middle. Because once you do the up, left, down, right, up. Or the up, right, down, left, up. Depending on your version. There's a square there before the right triggers. And I keep forgetting to press that. It's really annoying. And I've been trying to say them out loud. So I can actually do it proper without doing a montage. But it is just not happening, man. The, the, that is a lot of codes. And pretty, like I said, the code is pretty much all the way up to the final input. And then the final input decides the color. So it's pretty much like... It may have been easier for me to write them all down separately, but... Ugh, I don't know. It's, 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 it, that does get me... I mean, obviously, you would choose your one colour and you just play with that until you turn off your system. But, yeah, it's, it's like just showing them all off. It's not easy. <laughs> it's definitely not easy. But, yeah. As I've said, there is not really any other... Um, I've, as I've said, I've already covered all the exclusive codes to the original as well as the Reignited remake of the set games in their respective bonus episodes. They will be in the cards and description for every time we are on one of these games. I don't know if they've been appearing already, but I'll just make mention of that. Because if, if you're after any of the codes we're not covering in this video, because these cover mostly the entire trilogy, including all over the Reignited trilogy, there's not exclusive to each and every game. That's the reason why. And we're pretty much done on Spyro 2 now, because they, these codes originated in Spyro 2. And in fact, saying that, we're pretty much done with all of the original Spyro Trilogy codes. Because these codes that we just covered for the colour coders, they work in Spyro 3 as well. But I'm going to go into Spyro 3 because that's the end of the trilogy. And I feel like that is the best way to wrap up with the last exclusive Spyro Reignited Trilogy codes that we have up to this point. Because more are still being discovered to this day. So as I've said, the following codes that we're going to be talking about in this part of the episode will not work in the original trilogy in any capacity. They just don't exist unless they are still undiscovered and they've been moved into the remake. But apparently the remake has codes as well, as I've mentioned already, that just we don't know yet. So if there is any more codes that are going to be discovered, I might come back and make a bonus video. I have no idea. I'm just flying to this island because why the hell not? Might as well finish on the island that you can't get to in the original trilogy because we're going to be using codes that are not available in the original trilogy or in Spyro 3 in general. I just want to be here. So it's kind of fitting that we'll sit right here to do it like we did in the last episode, which was Spyro 3's bonus episode. So First reignited exclusive code is, well, pretty much these codes are more transformation based. Two of them could have been in the original, I just can't find the codes for them. So if anyone knows them, put them in the description and I'll see if I can, you know, and I'll put them into a uh, grouped pinned comment with uh, credit. I don't know. But anyway, we are here. So let's go for the small head mode. It's pretty much the opposite to the big head mode. 
which again I don't understand why I can't find a code for the originals if there's a big head mode surely there should have been a small head mode unless doing the code again is, con is considered small head mode because you know you just shrink your head back to normal size but no that's normal size we're going to make it smaller so for reunited trilogy only for ps4 it is right 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 r1 l1 left 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 x we don't want to exit though <laughs> let's get out of there and there we are we're a small head we actually look like the dragon statues funnily enough it actually makes us grown up but shrunken down in a way <laughs> i like how they actually modify his neck so it actually like leads up to it I mean, it also looks like Sparrow's put on a bit of weight. <laughs> it's amazing what a changed uh, head size can do, to be honest. It's kind of funny, that. And Sparks is just like, you're right there. <laughs> wow, I was comedically timed. Thank you for that, buddy. But yeah, that's, uh, that's the small head mode. Well, how about small wings, too? Here's the thing. In Spyro 1 on the PS1, Spyro's wings were actually smaller than what they are in Spyro 2 and 3. Even though it is technically the same model, the wings are slightly different and a bit bigger. Maybe it's because, you know, he can hover now. Maybe. Not too sure. But, you know, it's not about flying because he can already do that with the speedways or the flights in the first game. Anyway, yeah, we're going to do tiny wings mode now. So, yeah, let's do a... Well, funnily enough, the code is pretty much the same for the final button, but it's basically a reverse of the previous code that we just did, which may actually support the fact that it's not in the original, and no one, and it's only a reignited thing. Because now we press left, 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 L1, R1, right, 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 X. We don't want to exit the game, though. And there we are. Now our wings are a little bit more tiny. <laughs> Um, let me do those cheats again so that we can pretty much get ourselves back to normal. Because if I do the next code, they'll probably carry over and that will look very odd because I don't want to show it in that form. So, give me a minute. Alright, that didn't take very long. You can just mash and pretty quick if you're looking at the code. But anyway, I will I will make mention the Xbox One uh, code is, well, for small head, right, 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 RB, LB, left, 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 A. And of course, flip that without the final input and then put the final input in for Tiny Wings mode. Just say that. So, now for the final one. I'm not going to reveal the code until I actually type it in. So, I'll say the code as I'm typing it. This is a good one. And this is, this cannot be in the original trilogy because of what it actually is. It's a Reignited exclusive and it makes perfect sense as to why it is Reignited exclusive. Here it is. Well, for PS4, I'll say Xbox first because I'm not playing that version. It's left bumper, left bumper, left bumper, left bumper, up, down, up, down, up, down, Y. For PS4, it is L1, 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 up, down, up, down, up, down, triangle. We have a retro Spyro model. Look at this. It actually removed our shades. I don't think it can be used with the shades because they're part of the, uh, the new model, but yeah. Now, here's the thing. This is not one-to-one -one of the original Spyro, um, Spyro PS1 model. It's actually the reignited model with different textures and a lower polygon count. That's basically it. Of course, all of these transformation um, codes do not happen in cutscenes. So, don't think you can, like, go through the entire game and see this in cutscenes. But you can go through the entirety of the Reignited Trilogy, looking like the original Purple Boy. Well, as a close approximation. To be honest, the, it, I don't really... I can notice the differences, as well as the sharper clarity. But at the same time, it's pretty well done. They've got, like, the, the original Purple Hue, which isn't affected by lighting, I don't think. The, uh... It's, even the, uh... His eyebrows are incredibly blocky. I mean, they're not, they don't stretch, sadly, like they do in the original Insomniac releases, but... Yeah, we're like a retro Spyro, it's kind of awesome. And I, that is the perfect cheat to actually end on with, because... That's all the cheats for the Reunited Trilogy. In fact, for the Reunited Trilogy itself, because we covered all the ones that are exclusive to certain games in their respective bonus episodes, as I said, links in the cards, as they've been, as we've been going through the games. Those will also include the original game codes and ones that are notable. I didn't include like the ones that can warp you to the credits or anything like that because 
I don't see the point of that, and as I've said, there isn't a Reignited Ignite exclusive variant of that code, but the ones that are literally only available with that version of the game I wanted to show off, and those are pretty much the majority of them. So, yeah, that's pretty much all the codes I have to show. So, let me return myself back to normal. There we are. And I think that is it for the in-game. I think it's time to go back to the main menu, because there's only a couple more things that we need to talk about. First of all, the final thing that we got to talk about in-game itself is that we need to go to our save slots again, or just press continue so that we go into the file itself. Because if you remember, as we were talking about them all throughout the in for every bonus episode, if you get all the skill points in Sparrow 2 and 3, you get an epilogue sort of thing, but they've been replaced with an art gallery in the Reignited trilogy, if you have them all. You unlock half of them by getting first half, well basically one of two pages of the skill points done, and that's half, well, yeah, that's half of the art gallery. Uh, but, you know, Spyro 1, as I said before, did not have skill points. They were, like, new skill points made by t like t Toys for Bob themselves for the Reignited Trilogy. So they're Reignited exclusive skill points. They did not exist in the original. Insomniac didn't introduce skill points until Spyro 2 and onwards. And that includes Ratchet and Clank. However, it, the same applies in the Reignited Trilogy for the art gallery complete one of two pages of the skill points for that half the art gallery and then when you do once you get the whole art gallery you can view it but we only reviewed the uh, art galleries for each game in their bonus episodes but if you're on the title screen on the file selection screen to choose your game notice that we have a square that takes us directly to the art gallery no matter what game we're highlighting press square and look at that 63 images only one shy of the playstation one's competitor the 64 we can look at pretty much the entirety of the art gallery throughout all three games that you have unlocked thus far up to your files point. So I've already said my piece on all these artworks uh, in all those bonus episodes, link in the card, as I've said before, or in the playlist. So if you want to hear our thoughts, go through those videos to the, to the art gallery. They're normally at the end of the videos, and that's why I'm doing it at the end of videos here, for consistency's sake. But yep, it's pretty much all of the artwork. I mean, actually... The, I was about to say, that's a bit different, but no it isn't. But yeah, the, it's pretty much all the artwork. I mean, it would be nice that it would be a bit of a grid-like thing, like it did for most other games, like um, Sonic uh, and the Secret Rings, or, you know, uh, Metroid Other M, just to get, throw a few examples out there. But no, you can just scroll through the whole thing. Uh, Maximo actually has an art gallery, that's a thing. Just remembered that, so... Which was like a 3D reboot of ghosts and goblins or something i mean it uses the theme for, for quite often for crying out loud don't know why i'm talking about that but yeah this this is the entire art gallery of all three games meshed into one or you know if you have all of them unlocked and if not then you only can view what you have unlocked up to that point in your file and that's it really so yeah um I guess the only other thing left to do is come out of the game entirely, and look at this! This is another theme! This theme actually came out roughly at the same time that the patch did, because I didn't actually know this theme existed until afterwards. And guess what? It's not a pre-order bonus, and it's free! So, you need the you need online in order to, you know, get Spyro 2 and Reignited and 3 Reignited of the trilogy downloaded onto your system, but... That means you'll be able to get this for free as well. I mean, we can go to the uh, Play Store, or we can just come down here to a bit of a shortcut here, because we've got quite a few things to show off, especially if you've pre-ordered Spyro the Reunited Trilogy on your system, which is what I did, because, you know, when I heard that, you know, only one of the three games was going to be on the physical disc, I thought, well, what's the point of that? I might as well just get all three digital and reap the rewards for, like, five additional pounds. And... Yeah, but why not, right? So that's what I did. So we go to our themes here. As I said, you get five pre-order themes. Three based off of Spyro 1, one of Spyro 2, and one of Spyro 3. And I had them on every, pretty much throughout the entire project. And you probably saw them sprinkled around, or in the bonus episodes. So as you've pr probably already seen since, you know, when we started off, we have the original pre-order theme that is only via pre-order but i think you get that on download codes within the boxes if you get the physical cop well the one third physical copy i pr don't um, don't quote me on that though and i do not think that there is any uh xbox one equivalents playstation kind of get all the bonuses because you know the game was originally released on playstation to begin with so of course they would get all the bonuses but still um dual shock 4 light aside but yeah um 
get the pre-order theme, which we started off with effectively. We also have the Artisan's Meadows theme. So I'll show I'll show them all off right well, I can't actually click them here, can I? This is just gonna try and install them. I gotta go to a different menu. That's kind of annoying actually. But yeah, this is the uh this is the Fiery Returns theme which was uh downloadable for free outside of the uh pre-order bonus. Oh wait, I have to actually wait, I've got another wrong one. I've clicked the wrong button by accident. Here we are. So, ignore all the other stuff that I have here, because, uh, yeah. So, as you've seen, we have had, we, we're on the fiery return right now. So, I guess I'll go into order. So, this is the pre-order theme. Oh, I gotta back out every time. Okay, I might just have to do, like, a little cutting montage. But, yeah, this is the pre-order theme. This is the Artisan's Meadows theme. This is the hero theme, which is actually based off of the uh, first fly stage, which is in the Artisan's world. So all of these are pretty much based off of the Artisan's homeworld of Spyro 1. This is the Idle Springs home menu theme, which personally I feel like is just a little bit lazy. It's just a panoramic spin of the level, with pretty much stills of Spyro doing stuff in the level. While all the other ones are animated, including the Fiery Returns theme, which even though is a still of the splash screen when you boot up the game, seems a bit lazy. And finally, the uh, Sunny Villa skating theme from Spyro 3, because we're in Sunny Villa. I don't know why he's wearing the shades. I know it's Sunny Villa, but again, I mean, unless you'd use the cheat. I mean, maybe that's a dead giveaway that you actually is, there is actually a cheat for wearing the shades. My bad, it was actually called Ride with Spyro, but it should be called Sunny Villa, so whatever. But obviously, I just went back to the uh, Fire Return theme, which is not pre-orderable, but it is a download. But that's not it! We're still not done! If you pre-ordered the game, we'll have to go back to, uh, no, not that, I think I have to go to my profile, actually. Which is it? Edit profile? I want to get to the avatars to change my icon, I can't remember how I did it. Oh, this might be it. Ah, profile picture. Here we are. That might be it. Nope, that's not it. Avatar? I know it's one of these. I, I don't do this often. Yeah, here it is. Here it is. Here we are. So I want to go to premium avatars because all these... Well, except for, you know, <laughs> Warrior of Light and Terra Branford, which were Dissidia avatar downloads way back in the day on the PSP. Obviously, it's the same sign-in. But other than those two, you get... Nine Spyro avatars to use if you pre-order the Spyro Reignited Trilogy on the PS4 via the PlayStation Network Store. You don't get them in a physical release. So not only does the physical release only have one out, well basically one third of the trilogy on it, but it doesn't, you don't get any of these bonuses either. Five themes, nine avatars. I mean, you get like a model of Spyro. You get one of the dragon statues. You get the artwork for the Reunited Trilogy when it was first revealed. You get the original Spyro 1 model. Nasty Nork, Allura, Ripto, a sheep. Probably the sheep that messes with Spyro throughout the cutscenes of Spyro 1. And Hunter. So it's a sh shame that we don't get any to, uh, you know, promote. Spyro 3, we could have had Bianca. I mean, just the one would have been nice and round it off with solid 10. Could have had Bianca, but there isn't any. That's a real big shame. But of course, most of them are going to be, you know, uh, about the remake, you're going to have a Sp the, re the new model of Spyro, the artwork, the old model of Spyro. Then you've got, you know, for Spyro 1, you've got the the, the, the statue as well as Nasty Nork for Spyro 2. You've got, I guess, Hunter could be Spyro 3, I guess, because of Bianca, but... He's in 2 and 3, so, and he first appeared in 2, so... Eh. Sheep appears in all 3 games, even though that particular sheep's probably from number 1. I don't know. It's a bit weird. But yeah, those are the 9 premium avatars. I just couldn't remember how to get this screen, because I don't change my avatar pretty much at all. I like my Warrior of Light, so there we are. And I don't... I haven't changed it on this system, so... Hmm. Anyway, but yes, that is pretty much it for the entirety of the Reignited Trilogy. We are done. There is literally nothing else for us to cover. We have done all three games to their breaking point, including cheats, both on the original and on the Reignited Trilogies. And yeah, there is literally nothing else to say. So I'll, I'll see you guys for whenever we cover on our other Spyro games. 
our next project, whenever that will be. I have to actually decide what I'm juggling up right now because I've still got Zuda to finish. I've still got, you know, uh, and time to get back to. Goddamn death wishes. Uh, which is funny enough, what we were doing before we started with this. So, with the whole trilogy in general. And of course, like I said, more Spyro games. We've got Spyro 4, the original. Don't know if they get remade or not. We've also got the GBA Spyro games, which we probably should do before Spyro 4. But I think Spyro 4 was out before those GBA games, or at the same time. And more effort was put into them from a different studio than because of problems. Of, which is why Spyro 4 was the way it is. But, you know, I'm just kind of babbling at this point. There's not much else to say. I've said all my thoughts already on all three games, especially in the final credit sequence after the super bonus round in Spyro 3, which pretty much was about the trilogy as a whole. The glitches need to be patched, please fix those glitches, the sparks not grabbing a gem thing was the pretty much the most recurring problem, but there were so many other problems as well, like characters just poofing out of existence, and they're mostly condensed into Spyro 3, even though there are problems throughout the entire trilogy. It pretty much, the polish just went down and down and down throughout. I don't want to be say, saying smack about the trilogy. It's a really great trilogy. I'm still happy they got remade onto, the, onto new hardware. I wanted to cover the new versions, but I wanted to compare it to the old. That's gonna happen, but, you know, it just needs a bit more polish. And since it can be updated whenever, plus Spyro 2 and 3 are pretty much not on the physical copy at this moment in time. If it is, then don't get confused if I'm saying that. When it first came out, the, the, the Reignited trilogy came out, only, one, only Spyro the Dragon was on the disc. So, yeah, that's a thing. But, you know, we haven't even got a Switch version yet either. So, maybe when all the glitches are fixed, a Switch version could come out. Because it was teased on the website by accident and then was removed. So, yeah. Other than that, guys, see you guys for whatever we do next. This was a marathon. This was a Spyro marathon. And it took me borderline just seven, six to seven months to do. <laughs> and that means it was two months spread out for all the, the every game, but... It did feel longer than it needed to be. It should have been at least like four or five months. But anyway, said my piece. I'm just dragging this out. See you guys next time for whatever we do next on the channel. Our purple boy is back. <laughs>